All right, guys, so I'm gonna explain the concept of arrays because I got this video of a question from one of my old hacker rank videos about how arrays work. And I'm gonna explain how arrays work because this is just basically like, this is the basic, most basic data structure that you could possibly understand. And arrays are the, oh, like, bare minimum ba da uh, data structure that you should definitely know, okay? If you don't understand arrays, then this is a, uh, it's pretty hard to learn data structures at that point, okay? So, what are arrays? Let's say that I am waiting at Starbucks for coffee, right? So, this is Starbucks, and I, and I just got to Starbucks right here. This is me at the end of the line, and I just got right here. This is me, okay? This is me. I'm right here, and I'm at the end of the Starbucks line, and I got there too late, okay? Way too late. And then Starbucks is like, they want to hand you out the coffee and stuff like that. But the line is too damn long. So what do they do? Well, in order to make it fair to everyone, they're going to give everyone card numbers. And whenever they read the card number, you'll pick up and get your coffee and pay for your coffee. Okay, so this would be more, more fair. Because instead of just waiting in line the whole time, you just get a card number and then... If they call your call, when they call your call number, you just go get your coffee and that's it. Well, how can I assign a car, uh, assign the car number to every single person to make it more fair? We simple. We are going to assign a number in this, the line that you're waiting at to get your coffee based on how far you are from the first person. So the distance you are from the first person, that's going to be when you're gonna get your coffee, okay? So like here, this this guy, let's say this guy's name is Joe, right? He is one step away from the first person. So we're gonna have him one. We gave him the car number one. Now let's say this guy named Kim, right? Well, how far is he from the first person? Simple, two. He's from two from this first person, right? Because we're gonna assign him a number of two because that's gonna be when he's gonna get his coffee, okay? Well, let's say this is Stacy. All right, uh, let's give her a little hair like that. How far is Stacy from the first person? Three. And then how far am I at this end of the person from the first person? Four, right? Because one, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm, that's how far I am from the first person. And that means well, what does that mean? What does the first person get when he gets his coffee? Simple. Well, I'll assign him a value of zero. Okay? This is going to be the first person is going to have to assign him a value of zero. Okay? And that's basically what arrays are. They're basically objects that you, every single element for each object, you're going to give, they are indexed starting from zero and how far they are from the zeroth element. So here, at the end, I'm at four. At the beginning, I'm at zero, okay? So now you might be wondering, how exactly, how many elements are there in this array? Or objects, how many elements are there? How many are there? Well, there are five people. One, two, three, four, five. So there's five people, and the index we're indexing is starting from zero, okay? So, what does that tell us? The last person in our array is gonna have four. So, what does that mean? That means that at the end of the array, the last index is going to be the number of elements minus one. So it's the number of people, total number of people, so last element, is equal to total num total elements minus one, okay? Because we're indexing from zero, okay? So if I have five people, my last element is gonna have an index of four, and if I have six people, let's say I have six people, I have not another person here, let's say I had a six people here, right? Six total number of elements. Well, my index is gonna be five, right? Six minus one will be five. So that's basically arrays. And if I were to draw this out, like how the, it is in memory, it would be like object one, object two, 
whatever, whatever object these are, and they're indexed from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yada, yada, yada. So this is the array. So if my length of the array or the number of elements is n, right? Let's say the number of elements is equal to n. My last element is going to be at n minus 1. Okay, so my last index is going to be at n minus 1, right? So because we have, in this case, we have six elements, the last index is going to be n minus 1, and our first first element is going to be starting from 0, okay? So that base that's basically how arrays work. Um, now let, I'll explain how you loop through an array. Now, in uh, C++, Java, whatever language you're doing, how, how, how are we going to loop through the array? Simple. We start at zero until we reach the end. Okay? So what does that mean? I'm going to do four. Normally we have an index, int i is going to zero equal to zero. And I'm going to keep adding one until I reach the total number of elements. Okay? So if the number of elements is n, I'm going to go up to n and I'm going to add one. Now, here's the thing about for loops when you're looping through arrays, okay? Remember, this is the total number of elements, right? And I'm going to add one until I get to the total number of elements of n. The last, so that means the last value of i, the last value of i, in this condition, the last value of i is going to be n minus 1, okay? In this for loop, we start i equals 0 and we go up to n, the last element that is less than n is going to be n minus 1, right? Our last, uh, our last uh, index i is going to be n minus 1. So this is how you for loop, loop through an array. So you're going to go through i equals 0, go up to the last number of elements, in this case n, and then you just add 1. And then if I want to do something really nice, let's say I want to print out something, in, in C++ I would do C out, which is just print something out, and I'm going to print out my, let's say I have like R, let's I call this array R, okay? I'll just R at index I. And print out a new line. And that's how you loop through an array, right? So that's basically how arrays work. There's nothing else to it. But uh, there's uh, actually there's a few things you have to think about. Let's think about more things about arrays. What are the caveats? Oh, whoops. What are the caveats of arrays? But like I told you, arrays, you remember we have a specific index and we have two, three, four. If I have an array, so this is our array. Remember, the caveats are array. Remember, I have index from zero up to n minus one, right? So that's that's an array. And the number of elements is n, right? So n is the number of elements. What's the problem of this data structure? One thing is, let's say I'm at, let's say I have a bunch of objects here, right? A bunch of people, object, I don't know. I don't know people are not objects, but let's say I have a bunch of objects. I'll, I'll just assume that these are objects, okay? Let's say I have a bunch of objects here. Here's a caveat. Removing something is awful. Think about it. If I have to remove something, I, if I have to remove this whatever value at 3, right, I have to literally copy, a, a move every single person after 3, at index 3, down 1. So whatever at this person, I have to move him here, and then whatever, if, if there were more people here, let's say there was like another person here, I have to move him to the next spot, right, and then yada, yada, yada. So this is removing is a pain in the butt. Removing is a pain in the butt because if I remove someone from here, I have to literally copy every single value after him, move him to the front. That's a caveat of arrays. Removing is painful, okay? What's another caveat? What's another problem in arrays? Adding something, all right? So let's say I have a continuous people of, uh, let's say I have values 1, 2, 3, 4 index, right? Okay, so what arrays tell us is that they get, uh, you specify a size and you allocate 
memory for whatever uh, values you have in your array. So in this case, I, I specified a size of number of elements as five, and it gave me an array of elements zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, that's the good thing about arrays. Here's a problem. What if I want to add another element to this array? If I want to not add another person here, that's the issue. I literally have to create another new array. I can't because there's five people. I only have five people in this array. I cannot, I have to create a completely new array, then add that person in. So I literally have to have like one, two, three, four, five. Now I have to have, before it was five people, now I have to have specified now number of elements and it's now six, right? I have to have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I could have him in here and then move everyone, move everyone here, move everyone here, move everyone here. Got to move this guy here, right? I got to move this here, move this here. And then I could have him join, all right? And then I have to specify the index one, two, three, four, and five. So the, so the problem about arrays is adding and removing, right? Adding new elements, removing new elements. That's the only issue. That's the issue about it. Now, the good thing about arrays is that the index, indexing is the best thing about arrays. I want to get the fifth person, just give me array at five. Whatever array name is at, at five, this would give me this guy, right? I want to get the second person, right? I just have array at two. It would give me this guy, right? It would give me this this person, right? This this guy would give, if I said array thing, I want to find this array, it would give me this person, right? That's the good thing about arrays is that uh, there's indexing. So this is a good thing, good thing. The good thing about arrays is indexing, okay? So the caveats of arrays is adding and removing takes a lot of time because um, you have to copy everything over. Uh, removing you have to, you have it takes time because you have to copy everything over um indexing the good thing about arrays is that you could index and you could get a specific value at the person uh, at the place they're at okay um so that's basically how arrays work uh if you like in in c plus plus java whatever uh you could if the in the syntax would be something like int uh or well, not int so like uh if you want to create an array of integers Right, integers, booleans, whatever. You normally specify your the whichever value you want to create. So like integer boolean, character, so whichever type of array you want. So this is like the type, right? And then you would specify the name of your array. So normally I would have like R array R for a standing array or something or anything. Uh, it's better to have good variable names. So it depends on what you're trying to do with your array, but yeah. Normally you would do this, and then uh, in in Java you would actually have to have your brackets, which is like that, and then specify like new, new, new uh, int, and then give your size. So if I was to say n is equal to five number of elements, five, then I'll give five, and that's it. Okay. Now in uh, C plus uh, plus, you don't actually have to specify the new. So this is this is Java, right? Now in C plus plus, let's say it's C plus plus. All I have to do is just spec specify int r and then just pass in five okay so that's all i have to do uh it depends on what language it is um if you want to create a new object like array of objects you would have to specify whatever object name it is the type and then your name of your array and then yeah that would that's what you would do okay now let's talk about two-dimensional arrays okay so just like in in um math like in math, we have matrices. Remember math, uh, if you take in linear algebra or whatever, we have matrices. So this is like, um, matrices are basically like tables, right? You have tables of values, so like that. So let's say I have this, like a table, right? A table of rows and columns, like an Excel spreadsheet. Like if you know on, on online, there's like Excel spreadsheets, stuff like that. Well, this is basically what a matrix is, okay? So in matrices, uh, this is what the matrix is, what the table looks like, right? Um, so here's the thing is that in programming languages, right, we don't actually have like a specific way to like create this depending on some programming languages, right? I know in like, uh, 
in Java or C++. I'm not sure if you could actually, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about the new new ones, but you, you read, uh, I'm not sure if you could actually create, specify whatever number of rows and columns for your 2D, 2D arrays, right? So what do you do if you want to create arrays of some amount of rows and columns? Well, simple, this is what you do. Uh, you first create a one, a, okay, this is what you do. You first specify the number of rows you want, and then you allocate, you create arrays based on that number of rows, right? So if, if in, let's say I want to create rows of like five, right? So in uh, C++, what you would do is you would allocate uh, an array of of number of rows of five, so you'd have five rows. So one, two, three, four, five, right? So that you would do something like that. And then for each single cell in your number of rows, you would have it point to whichever number of columns you have, right? So here, let's say I have rows equal to five, and now I wanna create like a table like this, Right, but I want uh, wait. This is this should be five. Right? Let's say I want uh, columns to be five also. Right. So what I would do is I would create five rows. One, two, three, four, five. Five rows. I think this is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, my bad. Um, let me hold up. Let me see something. Uh, okay. Uh, let me just erase the last row. I would create five rows, and then what do I do? For each single row in my five rows, I'm gonna have a point to another array of five columns. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, oh, damn, I can't count. Okay, yeah, so this is how your 2D array internally, that's how it works. Like it doesn't know how many columns you want, so you actually have to like specify, um, you have to create the columns and rows based on that. So that's how this, that would work. And uh, if you want to, just like regular arrays, it's specified by a specific index, right? So here um, it's specified like row, number, row, row row by column, right? Just like um, regular arrays, it's supposed to have row by column. So if this is a 2D array, R, right? Um, we're gonna label them all has a index from zero, zero, one, two, three, four. And here's gonna be zero, one, two, three, four. All right, so if I want this specific cell, it would be R at zero, zero, okay? That would give me this specific cell. If I want this specific cell, it would be at row four, four. Row four, column four. So that would be R at four, four. Right, at this specific cell would be column four, four. And yeah, that's how uh, 2D's arrays work for 2D arrays. So um, in C++, if you wanna do this, what you would do is you would actually create your vector. A vector is basically, a, uh, it's basically an array, but except, um, you could resize it, right? It does its own resizing, so you don't actually have to do it yourself. But um, yeah, vectors are actually a good way to do things in C++ because you don't have to like, they have like a bunch of methods. So it's better to use vectors instead of just using actual arrays. But yeah, let's say I want to create my array. I would do something like this, and I would specify the number of rows. So here in this case, so I would have rows five, right? Five rows, so I would do something like that. And then for every single row, from zero up to row less than five, right? For every single row. So this is gonna go up to the last element is gonna go up to four, right? Because four is gonna be the last value that's less than five. It will, it will go up to four. And then um, what I'll do as I said, R at every single row, I'm going to equal to another vector, which is now gonna be another integer vector. And I'm gonna specify every the number of columns I want. So that would be, in this case, five columns also. Okay, so this is how you would create your 2D matrix in C++ using vectors. Vectors are basically just uh, arrays that you could resize it. So yeah, um, I'm not sure if you guys could see it. I hope you guys can see it. Yeah, so that's what you would do. You go through every single row and then specify the number of columns. 
Um, if you want to like have, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what you do. I was going to talk about like, yeah, you could plug in like whatever uh, variable you want into this and this as well. So like, let's say if I wanted n n rows and an m columns, I would plug in n and and m here. I'd plug in n for the number of rows there. But yeah, you could pass in variables also if you want to change something. So yeah, that's how you would do some two uh, Ds arrays in C plus plus and in Java. Uh, in Java, you could actually you would this would be an array list, right? That's what you do. But yeah, that's how you do this. Um, that's how you do 2D arrays. Um, sometimes you could actually you could actually create ragged arrays, which is like 2D arrays, except each side is different. So you could have like at zero be like three columns, and at one be four columns, right? And at three you would be like two columns and stuff like that, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, so how would you go through how would you go through your 2D array in your in your um, in your 2D matrix? Uh, what you would do is just like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and then remember the it points to like one, two, three, four, five, so and so on and so forth. So how would you print on all the values of your two D array in Java or in C plus plus? Simple. You would go through every single row. So we go to enter the row equals zero, and you go through every single number of rows, which is the number of rows. In this case, it would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? Because we have one, two, three, four, five elements. And then you would have to go through every single number of columns. So it would be int column zero, and then we're gonna go up to five columns, call plus plus, and then you would just print it. So, in Java, you could do uh, system.out.println. In C++, you would do cout. So cout, uh, it would be your array, whatever array your name it is. So whatever array name you would do put here. Uh, it, it doesn't matter like what name it is. I like to call this array r because just to make more sense. And it would be row and then column. Yeah, that's how you would print out. This is how you print out your array, 2D array. So yeah, that's how you would print out your 2D array, and yeah, that's how you would do it. Um, there's also other ways you could print it out. Uh, instead of doing like this, you could do like auto, which is like a shorter version of it. So instead of doing like indexing, you could print out like uh, for auto x of r is less than number of rows, and then just print out like that. Um, you could also use like one liner, one liner lambda expressions, which they added in Java and in C++. Yeah, you could do that also. I mean, you could use for each loops. You could use one li um, lambda expressions to do it. However, way you want to do it, it depends. But yeah, that's how you. That's how arrays work. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. I'll probably do another video on. Um, I'll do another video on the current uh, Code Forces contest that just came out today. I'll put that up the, at the end of later today. But yeah, that's all I'll do. All right, rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.